morning, Africa. Good morning, the world. Welcome to this edition of the Scandic. Uh, we call it SNC Quarantine. Huh? A very special welcome to all of you. Use the hashtag Scandic UG Champion. My name is Brian Blondo, and uh, over the past five years, in case you're just joining us for the very first time, we have been influencing uh, uh, schools across the entire country. This year, it's amazing. It's bigger and better. 60,000 students, and uh, we're just getting started. Last week, we looked at how you can identify business opportunities. Today, you will need some money first to identify those business opportunities, so we'll be demystifying personal finance. I'm excited. Are you excited? Let me hear at least for my guests who have not yet come Please host a watch party. Tell your friends that we are live. You can sign it on your Facebook page. And of course, share it on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, even Zoom. We can have a Zoom thing right now. The world has changed. Today, Twitter announces that their people might actually work from home. What are you doing to rebrand yourself during this quarantine? Here at Sandvik, we are moving forward regardless. And uh, this morning, I'm pleased. I'm so pleased to be joined by three amazing individuals. On my extreme right is an alumni of the show, the championship, the whatever you choose to call it, of the experience, is called Daniel. A round of applause for Daniel! Yes, Daniel is an alumni from uh, St. Mary's College, Kisubi. Uh, those of you who cut it to smart, we know where you went. It's uh, St. Maria uh, uh, Chigoa SS. No, no, that's not smart. Uh, Daniel, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Daniel is in his Essex vacation. Yeah. Also, on my. Uh, is it the. Uh huh. Just the Akumpi. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's Beatrice Diamanzi. <laughs> Those of you who don't know Beatrice Diamanzi, okay, some of you are saying she's called Diamanzi all this time because you call her B3. Mm. Hey, that her stage name. If she were an artist, she would be B3. She's actually an artist. Yeah, uh, B3 is a personal finance coach. I'm telling you, she's, we're going to be feeding on some amazing soul food this morning as far as personal finance is concerned. Uh, B3, thank you so much for joining us. And in the middle, income status, right there, is M. <laughs> <laughs> the people who make it possible for us this morning, Emma Mugisha, thank you so much for joining us. Emma is the head of corporate investment banking at Stanley Bank. A round of applause. Oh. Yes. yes. Without Stanley, we wouldn't do this. And for some of you who have been following us, you know what this is about. We are not just asking people to compete, we are changing their lives. Plus the head teachers, plus the teachers. We'll be sharing those stories as the time goes by. We wouldn't also uh, cause this change without the amazing partnership of people like MTM. Yes! Woohoo! water. Sipping on some very water this morning. A-I-U-E-A. You see you roofing. Uh, the guys who make sure that everything uh, goes according, uh, there's no academia for here. <laughs> Our auditors, they are making sure that whatever we do is actually legal, it is uh, confirmed, it is right. Some of you say that we are cheating. No, 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 no. Everything is done right by our friends at PWC. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are running some questions on our Facebook page. This morning, the first five people to answer those questions will win some sumptuous meals, courtesy of Cafe Jabba's. We'll be right back.
welcome back. back. You, you can start uh, post, post the conversation, conversation on our Facebook page. Please, please go and uh, talk, talk to us about what you'd like to, what, what is the expectation from this conversation. conversation. Also ask questions uh, during, during the presentation, and of course we'll be reacting uh, to those questions with our, our panel of guests. Starting us off is Beatrice Biamanzi, a personal finance coach. And the big question today is, as far as demystifying this personal finance conversation is about, what is the actual secret? Beatrice, over to you. Thank you so much, Brian. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. I am many, many, many things. But today, I come in the capacity of a personal finance coach. I am proudly associated with the straightforward financial growth team um, that is led by Moses Mukisa. He has written an incredible book by a Ugandan that you should get in your hands, and it's going to transform your mentality around finances. So I have called today's topic, what is the secret? You know why? Because that's a question I asked for so many years. I felt like people out there had a secret about money that they were not sharing and they wanted the rest of us to stay behind so that they can make more money. When I heard stories of people who had made it financially, I'd be like, why do all of you have to come from selling onions? Then somehow when you sold onions, you saved money and you became a billionaire. Why? Then another, everyone had a crazy story of starting from the gutters and going up. And I thought to myself, must I first have a bad story before I can have a good one? <laughs> so like any normal Ugandan, I went to school, I finished university, I got a job, and I ate money. I ate <laughs> money. Do you understand? Eh? I ate my money. In fact, the point was the more you eat and the more you show that you're eating, then the more people feel that you're making money. <laughs> so I, I'm telling you, if you're watching me right now, the best habit you've probably practiced financially over the years is spending. Is eating. All of us are well practiced Chop in spending. Money. In fact, every day you are chopping some money. Every day you're <laughs> chopping some money. And this COVID situation has woken us up to realize that we need to wake up when it comes to personal finances. I am so passionate about it because I have made so many mistakes with finances and I have come out of that and started to practice the habits around finances and started to see the change I was whispering to to Emma earlier that the strange thing is that when you start to practice these things it's like money locates you it's like money starts to know your address a little bit more because <laughs> some, someone said that money always talks to them and it says goodbye like it, it, every time it's talking to them it's saying bye bye you know it comes and it goes before it even hits your account boom it's gone like there was money one day so today i want to talk to young people and anyone else who's watching that let me tell you this thing is possible i want you to know that this is possible that there is no big secret. I'm going to show you what the secret is, but I hope you're ready. And I want you to know that I'm speaking as a person who my personality around money is that I, have been, I am a spender at the core. Now you think that for you, you've practiced spending generally. Now for me, I was a spender. I was the kind of person who needed to show people that I have money. So if there was a wedding meeting, I would borrow to give money I don't have. Do you understand? <laughs> You're earning 1.5, but you want to give a million to the wedding meeting. Then you like borrow, you wedding. pay through your ears and your nose so that people can understand that or innocent. Maybe you're a student, you don't even have money, but when they ask for people to contribute, you say you're going to give money, then you borrow, or some of you use some of your school fees, or you even, now, the whole time you're there thinking about money. Now many of us think that people who have money are the ones who are money-minded, but the broke people are more money-minded than poor have money. You know, <laughs> you're always thinking of how to get it, how to get it, how to get it. Today we want to answer the question, what is the secret? What is the secret? Why is money always running away from me? I make it, it disappears. It's like I have holes. How do I close the holes and increase my capacity to make money and to even make money, make money for me? Mm -hmm. So today that is the question I want to answer. What is the secret? I want to show you an image that is again out of the straightforward financial growth book. And this is what we call the wealth cycle. It is so simple. Here are the three steps to being financially free, as simple, and I know some of you are like, really, it's three steps, yes. They are here are the three steps. One, get it, get it. If you can't, if you don't, if you don't work hard, if you don't work for money, you've already lost it. Like if you can't make money, you've noticed in this season, if mm. you've been home and you've not been making money, that there's no money to save. Yeah. You must make it, get it, then keep it. Many of us are okay with getting it. Mm. Keeping it, keeping it, keeping it, dear children of Uganda and beyond Africa. Mm. Keeping it, mm. keeping it, <laughs> eh? keep it. 
and then grow right. it. You must start by making it. Hard work is the first step towards financial right. cre creation. Hard work, hard work. And we are now have a generation of young people who do not want hard work. We want to sit home and somehow money should find us. And now you can sit home and money finds you, but you have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. There is no job that is easy. I want you to get that in your head. Because every time you see someone else doing work, you think, ah, Brian Mulondo, he just stands there and talk talks and they pay him. You come and talk talk. You come and try to talk talk and see if they'll pay you. There is no job that is, that is, so getting it requires you to add value to yourself, to skill yourself, to keep improving. If you have a gift, what are you doing with it? How, what are you learning around your gift? If you have a skill that you have, how are you making it better right now to be the cutting edge ahead of the pack? Get it. Get it. How are you being creative? Yes, yes. I've met young people who are sitting home saying, I have a boutique and it can't work until COVID ends. What if this thing goes on for two years? You must be thinking, how do we actually make money? And you know how to make money? Mm -hmm. Solve a problem. Brian is solving an entertainment problem. He speaks and you feel good. Okay? I am, I am solving a knowledge problem. What yeah. problem are you solving? You have something. What problem are you solving? If you can cook food, you're solving a food problem. What is it that you're solving? If you are a student in school and there are things you understand better than others, discuss for them at a fee. Yes. You teach them because you're the extra teacher. They didn't understand in class. They come to you, give you 5K, 2K. You discuss for one hour. Let me tell you, you can play it here. What problem are you solving? I don't think about what are giving pocket money at home but if i asked you how much money do you make as a person who has a job what would you tell me many of you are watching you're like why are you asking such a question i know how much i make i make 1.5 i make 200,000 uganda shillings i make a hundred dollars a month i make 200 dollars a month but do you actually make that money okay. i want to tell you something get out your your phones which have calculators and let's do a small exercise mm -hmm. let's say that i let's use brian brian let's say brian earns one million uganda shillings mm -hmm. every month mm -hmm. now brian happens to have uh, some responsibilities we're going to start showing you how much money brian makes because brian is actually a courier of money to different people mm. when he makes that one million he needs to take the landlord's money to him mm -hmm. so 300k let's say brian lives in a house of 300k 300k no. has gone to the landlord. It wasn't Brian's money, was it? No. It wasn't. He just couriered it from his employer to help him have a place to sleep. Okay? Hmm. So Brian has 700k left. Brian needs to dress appropriately because hmm. he earns 1 million, my friend. People have to understand that he's a serious person. <laughs> so let's say he spends like maybe 100k a month on apparel, making sure he looks good and saloon. All those things put together. Men don't spend too much. Hmm. 100,000 <laughs> apparel what? But actually, he now took the money to the boutique and some of it to the barber. It wasn't his. He couriered it. He has wow. 600 k mm. Brian also needs transportation to move. If he lives in a house of 300 k we all know it's far from his workplace. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he spends on transport. The, the more, the more cost-effective, the higher the distance. Yeah. So how much does Brian spend on transport a month? Maybe 200 k there. 200,000 Brian spends. How much is he left with? 400,000. But wait a minute, Brian has to eat. How much does Brian spend, you guys, you think, on food? 300. Ah, 300. 300. It's Rolex, my friend. In, <laughs> in, in this example, Brian is not even married. Manuela doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. So he has to spend on some food. Food, Chikomando, Chikomando. Mm. and maybe Rolex here and there. But also he has to show up at Java's once in a while with his mm. friends because he earns a million. Mm. You know he has to go to Cafe Java's. Mm. So maybe Brian spends about 200,000 on food. But also Brian needs entertainment, you people. He has to have DSTV when his friends come to visit. Jesus. Yeah. So maybe package of like, maybe, which package is there? 32. That, okay, let's say Brian, is, he, he, he goes to, to all fans video to get his videos for extra entertainment. 32,000. He still has 168,000. But Brian also needs essentials. 
Soap, we hope brand babies. Deodorant and other grooming items, maybe 50,000 shillings. Brian also has a chana. My friend, she expects some. Airtime. At least airtime here and there, 100,000 has gone. Are you with me? We've reached 18,000 is what Brian should be with. But Brian has friends who have wedding meetings. He can't show up useless. Brian, if he gives 200 people to the wedding meeting, he's in negative 182,000. Do you want me to what? continue? So what does Brian earn? Nothing. In fact, Brian, Bamubanja. Brian is simply a courier of money. Are you a courier of money? Do you simply earn your 2 million and you courier it from who needs it to, from you to survive? To the supermarket owner, to the kiosk guy, to your Rolex guy. Who are you working for? <laughs> who are you working for? Maybe the biggest person you work for is your landlord. But you're not even aware. Because that's the person you pay the most every month. You've not even put in the person who helps to wash Brian's clothes and iron because he probably cannot wash his own clothes. <laughs> Basically, by the time the month starts, money has said bye-bye to Brian. <laughs> yeah. He probably has a car loan. He's eyeing a car for a promotion. Like, you think about it. What, what money is truly yours? iPhone 11. There's iPhone 11. You start because you've been depositing 200k a month. Yeah. So here is the thing. What money is truly yours? The only money that is yours is the money you save to invest. That is the only money that is truly yours. The money that you save to invest. That is the only money that is truly yours. I want that to stick in your head. Mm -hmm. The only money that you can say, I earn. If you earn 2 million shillings and you save 200,000 Uganda shillings, that is how much you earn a month. So stop telling your friends you earn 2 million. You earn 200,000 if you save it. But if you don't save, you should be honest and say, I don't yet earn a salary. The only money that is yours is the money that you save. And I am telling you, you're talking to a person who for the longest time felt like people who save are too, yeah, they're just overthinking about life. Me, one day I'll save my friend. Then you become the one who is always praying for miracles, who is always hoping somebody drops you something. Why don't you be the one creating the miracles for others? Why don't you be the one when people show up and they need, if I come to you and I say, I need money for rent, what do you say? I will pray for you. You, I don't need prayer, I need rent. Mm. For us to be able to solve problems, and I want to talk to people who like to spend because you have a big heart. I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. We need to have a money management plan. You need to be able to know that you must secure the future first. You must secure the future first. So who is your real enemy when it comes to personal finances? Do you know who your real enemy is? I want you to see that picture on the screen right now. Your real enemy is that thing in red. Do you see it? With the lightning on it, expenses. <laughs> it even has lightning. Because you see, <laughs> income, money comes in, you can lose it right there at income level. Mm. It comes in, boom, expenses. But do you even know you can lose it at savings level? Mm. Some of you know you've lost your savings in this season mm. because you put it on a bank account where you can access it and eat it. Mm. So some of you save to postpone the expenditure. You save so that you can go on a holiday in December. You save so that you can have money to eat in Christmas. You're postponing expenditure. It is not wise. You lose it at savings if you put it on, a, if you save it for nothing. What are you saving money for? I'm not saying it's wrong to save for holidays, but is that what you're saving for? But remember, if you save it for a holiday, that's not your money. The mm. only money that is yours is the one you save for investment, to secure the future. Mm. Ugandans. Africans, we can get to a point where we do not have to be begging. And if you start with the little you have, I know of stories of border border men. Border border men in Uganda are the guys who ride bicycles. That's their main source of income. They started putting aside 30,000 shillings a day. At the end of a week, how much does that person have? 210,000. At the end of the month, this guy became a millionaire. This guy became a millionaire in two years. And I'm not talking about one million. He had like 10 million, 12 million. In two years, while the corporate person who earns money that is way more than that is struggling and taking loan after loan, why? Habits. Your enemy is expenses. Some of us lose at assets because you save it and then put it in assets. And you know what happens next? I have to sell my asset because I need cash. Cash is king. Yeah. Cash flow is king at the end of the day. And then some of us lose it at cash flow. Your investments bring in money. The moment your investment brings in interest, you eat it. Don't eat your children. 
Don't yeah, eat yeah. your children. The money has, has produced yeah. children. You eat the you children. Eating Why are you eating your children? <laughs> so you must protect the money by put, when money comes through savings and then you invest, you reinvest the investment. Let me tell you a secret. Money compounds. Mm. And guys, it's exciting when money compounds. The other day, you know my husband has suffered with me. He was the one who was frugal. He would save money and I would be so annoyed. I'm like, why are we suffering when we have money Shop saved? Money. Hey, let's chop some money. We have to show people. We have to drive a Benz to the wedding. Show them that we have money. Mm. Hey, we have to... He would go and, he would, he would go and, and, and say that he has pledged 200,000 for a wedding meeting. I'm like, no way. 200,000. <laughs> I go behind his back. I add money. <laughs> you understand? To show them that we have money. Meanwhile, we are broke after that. And some of you who are watching right now, that's what you're doing. You're trying to live a lifestyle that you can't afford. You're trying to prove to people who don't care, who are not even watching you. That you are, you're trying to prove to them that you have money. But you don't have it. If you, the one you have right now, are you being faithful with it? Mm. Because expenses are your enemy. Expenditure. Expenditure becomes our biggest enemy. If we keep spending money, eventually we have nothing. Mm. So here is the thing. If you cannot make it, you will have nothing to keep and grow. You must work hard. Young people, this is the time for us to arise. Wake up. Opportunities are all over the place. Stop shutting down your mind seeing no opportunity. There are opportunities. Remember, money is a reward for solving problems. If you can't make it, you will not keep it and grow it. But if you don't save it, you will not have anything to grow. And stop despising small beginnings. If you can only save 20K, start with 20,000 Uganda shillings. Start there. That's what you have. And like I've told you, with time, it compounds. It compounds. Get a coach for your finances. Do something. Do, just know that there is no big secret. I have seen people who have come from nothing become billionaires. And I'm not, I'm not talking about pies in the sky. I've also seen people... Here, I, was, I was whispering again to Emma that, you know... If they got money right now in Uganda and distributed equally, the rich people had to give up their money and give to some of the poor, and all of us got a, a, an amount of money that is the same across the board. Give it a few months, the poor will go back to being poor, the rich will find a way to become richer. Why? They, it's about habits. They know exactly how money works. Money, you can control it. It has a soul. You can control it. You can get in charge of it. There's, there are friends of mine, I'm going to say a Uganda word here. We keep saying that, esente zikutuma. Money can send you around if you can't control it. Money sends you. The moment it hits your account, you become like a mad man, a mad woman. You buy for everybody things. You have what? Money is sending you around. It's, you're under its control. If you don't send money, it sends you. It sends you around. People even know, ah, Brian has got money. Mm. Then after like two weeks, Brian, our demo is no longer picking phone calls. He doesn't <laughs> hang out. You know, do you know why? Money sent him around until it ran out. Yeah. Don't let money send you. You send it. Mm. Be the master of money. That if you don't invest what you have saved, you are postponing expenditure and eating into your future. So then what do we do? What practically can we do? The secret to money is consistency and discipline over time. Listen Take to me. End. The secret is consistency and discipline over time. time. I want you to hear the word time. Young people, we are so impatient when we hear the word time. We are so used to popcorn, microwave, I want it now. I turn on the Facebook feed, the picture comes, everything is so instant. Money doesn't work like that. Everyone you admire took time. They were in the gutters before you knew about them for about 5, 10 years. There's nothing like, like overnight success. It was a very long night. <laughs> overnight, that person has been harnessing their skill for years. You just didn't know them. But when they showed up, you recognized value. What value do you bring to the marketplace? But when you give the value, what value are you adding to yourself? It is over time. When it comes to wealth creation, time is your friend, my friend. The other day we were driving... With my husband, okay, not recently, we are in lockdown, please. Not, not in the lockdown, before the lockdown. <laughs> People were driving and out of the blue, be my husband, I told you he has suffered. He has tried to teach me managing money and I defeated him for many years. Mm -hmm. We've been married 12 years, it hasn't been easy. I'm so sorry, he's watching. You've suffered. <laughs> You've really suffered. He's here, he's here. But let me tell you, <laughs> we were driving up and suddenly he said, you know what, it's really good to have some money. And I laughed. You know, because it's true, it's good to have a certain security with finances because money buys you freedom. You're able to go where you want to go. You can eat without looking at the right-hand side of the menu. 
Some of you, you always look at the menu at Java's and say 5K water. You're always drinking water. <laughs> you're always drinking water. Because the money decides what you're going to eat. But don't you want to get to a point where you can choose what you want to eat from the left side of the menu? Oh. You say, I want to eat this. You don't care what is on this side. But that takes time and discipline. You have to, you have to pen, pen, pen now and play later. Or play now and you pay later. Here is a picture I hate that I like to paint. Do you want to be 75 years old? Showing up at the office with your 20-year-old boss <laughs> who is telling you why did you come late again and you need an afternoon nap at 75. <laughs> is that what you want? But right now the decisions you're making are determining the future you will have financially. Let me tell you friends, indiscipline and inconsistency are your enemies. So if you know that your problem is you can't keep money, find systems, get friends who sign on an account where you cannot touch the money. So what I do right now is the moment money hits my account, I send a percentage towards investments where I can't touch it, even in this COVID time. I can't withdraw. It's not there. It's not on an account. But, but here is the thing. Get a money management plan. Do you have a plan? And I want to show you a simple plan that you can follow as we close. If you're a person of faith, you believe in God, the first person you should give to, we okay. said tithe is a good thing, 10%. Mm -hmm. The next person you must pay, listen to me, the next person you must pay is yourself. We suggest a minimum of 20% of your expenditure. Mm -hmm. And here is the thing, you're probably thinking 20% is a lot. It's not. Do you know that right now if you earn 1 million, you can eat 1 million? Mm -hmm. And if you switch to 5 million, you will increase your expenditure to eat 5 million. Mm -hmm. It's not about how much you earn, it's discipline. Understanding that the level you're at right now, you get your 20%, 200,000 if you are 1 million Anna, put it aside. Even if you make 10K, put aside 2K savings. 20%. Then after that, giving, put aside a percentage. Say I give 10%. So if a friend comes and says, I'm in trouble, I need to borrow from you 1 million shillings. Unless you're in the money lending business, don't send to friends. You will even kill your relationships. Mm. Send them to a money lender. Otherwise, tell them, Bambi, I have 50 at least now you're looking for 950. Mm -hmm. Some of you are saying, even your heart is beating fast. You're like, how can I give a friend 50K when they need 1 million? But you don't have it. Mm. Why are you eating your future? You don't have it. Let's be realistic. Be, be, don't be like me who was borrowed to give so that people think I have money. Then I'm broke at home. Give what you have. Have a plan for giving. When it runs out, it's out. That's going to push you to work harder because eventually your savings and investments will be so good that you'll be able to give more money. You'll be able to give a million shillings and it's not, even a, it's not even hurting you. You'll be able to give 10 million and it doesn't hurt you. Do you guys realize that people who have money don't give as much as you think they should and you get offended at them? Can you imagine? That man has money, but he only gave 200k. Is it your money? Mm -hmm. Where are you? Mukopi Mukodo. You always <laughs> yours. Mukopi Mukodo <laughs> has a financial plan. And those are the people who eventually educate generations because they saved and were able to give back. What are you doing with your money? And then expenses should fit within 60% of your expenditure. Come on. I want you to remember this. The first thing I talked about was discipline and consistency. The next thing is pay yourself first. If you're out there, repeat, say, pay yourself first. Pay, pay yourself, yourself first. Be selfish about this. And that's what, this is what my husband and I used to do. We would give tithe. Then we would spend, give. Then whatever is left, we would save. That's a bad way. To do your finances. Now what we do is money comes, you give tithe, and then we take off twenty percent savings as a must. And I'm saying apply this to all your expenditure. Salary earners, you only plan for your salary. What about extra income? Because when you do your cash flow, you realize that you spend more than you earn. Unless you're a witch doctor, you tell me how you <laughs> spend more than you earn. That money you just are not recording it, and you're not planning for it. It's escaping you. It's not possible. Pay yourself first every time. So in summary, what have I said? Have a clear why. Why do you need to, sec to save your money? Why do you need to have a good money management plan? Because you need to secure the future. Get financial knowledge. Get a coach. People are teaching all over the city. Even wherever you are right now, there are people who know more about money. Get them to teach you. Work very hard and smart. Don't sit on your behind throughout COVID waiting for COVID to end. Get up. Do something. Okay, you have value. Have Add value to people. Charge reaction. for the value that you bring to the and market. Banque, have a very clear plan yourself. and follow it. And pay yourself fast. Remember the only money you have is the one that you've saved. Refuse to increase your expenditure. Even when you get more money, save more. As opposed to now, eh, Kamani has come. Let's go and now increase to DSTV premium. No, you're not a courier. Increase your savings instead because you're securing the future. Remember, start today with what you have and keep going because wealth compounds. I'm going to end with a, with a quote from one of my coaches. 
John Maxwell. He says that the secret to your success is in your daily habits. Mm -hmm. Listen, the secret to your success is in your daily habits, even in your financial success. What you keep doing, if you practice expenditure, 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 money will keep escaping you. But today, if you make a decision, start saving money and stick with it no matter how much you have. It's a matter of time. It starts to compound. Wealth gets attracted to you. You do not choose your future. You choose your habits and your habits decide what the future will look like. Remember, work hard and smart, save and invest, and be consistent. Time is your friend because with time, wealth compounds. Thank you for listening to me. I've heard this before, but it sounds so fresh. Yeah. You are a courier for your money. Hey. I don't know how many people I've been working for. Except myself. <laughs> Our Facebook is lit. Please go there and ask questions. I see so many people, including B3's husband, watching. <laughs> please, share, uh, please share your experience, uh, some of the things that you went through, the things that you suffered before B3 uh, and you finally worked it out. This is amazing. Uh, we've all heard from people about the secret you know, of money. And what those who, have been, who are successful have done with the money. But it's always refreshing, especially to hear it from someone you know and uh, what they've done to make their money work for them. When we come back, your questions and reactions from my panelists. Stay with us. Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, this is N SNC Quarantine. If you, in case you don't know, SNC is Stanbic National Schools Championship. And this is the quarantine edition. Ordinarily, we would have been at a boot camp at Gaza High School teaching students uh, matters on personal finance, life skills, and of course, uh, uh, writing business plans and all that. But because of the lockdown, we are going online. We thank you so much for your views. There are so many comments here. Uh, let me start with um, Emma Mugisha. Emma, uh, most people say that the bank is not in the habit of making us save. Uh, in, if anything, they are calling us, oh, are, uh, are we their couriers? But your reaction is what B3 said. Because also, uh, before getting a loan, the bank will, will, will ask you, what are you going to use this money for? Yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes when the math doesn't, doesn't make sense, sense they, they tell you, we cannot give you this loan, you know, because you, you really don't fit. You know, if you don't hit it, you guys do the math and say, Mr. Mlon, according to your hundred million, we can't give you a billion. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> From where you sit at the investment uh, banking level, uh, quick uh, reaction to this uh, a presentation, especially in regards to personal finance. No, wow. I, yeah, Beatrice, that was amazing, amazing. You know, sometimes you think you know. <laughs> <laughs> then you look at the, at the lightning and you reflect <laughs> on your mouth. You reflect on your lightning. <laughs> and you realize how many lightnings you've caused. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the one that got me, because I think personally, I, I learned how to save um, a bit early. But the, the bit where you eat your children, that one got me. Yeah. Properly, you know how the interest drops on your account, doop, and you first go to Javas. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you first go and pay Kahawa downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think this is amazing. Mm. Um, 
I think what uh, we talk about financial literacy and we, we missed a class in school. We really missed a class in school. I mean, the guys who, the, 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 the secondary school kids who are doing national schools now and are learning this, guys, please take the opportunity. I remember I was in Gaza. I remember we were taught how to type. So, mommy comes, you get your 10K for a month, you take off the type. Yeah. But imagine if I had started to save them. Yes. I am, you know, kind of close to fourth, fifth floor now. Hmm. I would be a lot richer. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. So if you start when you're young, and the bit that money compounds is so important, can you imagine earning interest on interest? Oh. Now mm. you are not treating your grandchildren also. Mm. Leave the children. You mm. now have grandchildren. Mm. Yeah? Money compounds is, the compounding of money is such an important thing. So as a bank, um, we do have some, a number of products to save. So I, I have an EduSafe for my children, for example. Right. And as soon as the money drops back, one of the things I pay myself or try to invest in the future is saving for my children. So I have an EduSafe, and I would invite you to, to join us on that product. Mm. But also, we as a bank will offer you different products, but the habit has to be yours. Yeah. Right. So you have to decide, I need to put some money on a fixed deposit. Maybe it is uh, you know, compounding it until it can buy an asset or collecting it until you can buy an asset. And I, I really um, relate to Beatrice because I am also a spender. When money is in my pocket, eh, it is burning a hole on where, <laughs> where to go. So I try to clear my current account as yes. much as possible and leave enough to leave for the, for the month. And that means I have a budget. And for me, because I'm a spender, that is a, a habit I've had to learn to do, to say, okay, so this is my budget for the, for the month. And that's what I keep on my current account. The rest gets off. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. every shoe that passes, you know. Those <laughs> so, yeah, we can do fixed deposits as a bank. We can do the EduSave. Uh, we can also support you to get into treasury bills. You can lend to government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a friend uh, who's amazing. She has every month decided to put money on treasury bills. You know, the least amount of money you can put on treasury bills is 100,000. So yes, even Mr. Mulondo, earning one million, mm. could put money in <laughs> treasury bills. How much, what's yeah. The, the amount least amount, amount you can save, you can lend to government. Treasury bills and bonds are us lending to government, is 100,000 yep. shillings. Wow. So if you choose to keep this as a habit, you can put away whatever amount per month, and do you know it adds up? And yes. Stanley can help you do yes. that. Yes, Stanley can uh -huh. help you open us. We call it a CDS account. It's an okay. account with Central Bank. Mm -hmm. We can help you to do that. Any of our branches will be able to help you do that. Okay. So as you, uh, as you said, you have to put money far away. Mm. So by the time you want to come back and, and redeem that treasury bill, it's a process. And probably in that process, you've thought through whether you really need that money or not. If it's on your current account, on your ATM, on, uh, now we even have start on ATM. Mm. Eh? <laughs> Yes. As long as you can open a current account, you can so have a CDS. Nothing stops you. So my qualification to open, to, to, to engage in treasury bills is the current. I need to have a current account yes. with the bank. Yes. Okay. So part of my children saving, because I'm teaching my children how to save, and they've got their accounts, but when they accumulate to a certain amount, I also help them put it into treasury bills. Okay. Uh, because you get a bit more interest on that as well. So right. again, it goes back to a habit. It goes back to what are, what are the options that you have mm -hmm. and how much, and you must save. Right. All right. I, this, this information is amazing. It's so refreshing. And uh, just like about a week ago, uh, my wife and I were looking at uh, where our children are. Mm. Yeah? And we're like, ah, the children are taking long to grow, but <laughs> one day we shall get there. One of, our, uh, of the uh, people that have walked this journey with us is Daniel, uh, my extreme right. Daniel is an alumni uh, of the championship. He's now in his Essex vacation. Daniel, show us your story. We met you when you were doing brickets at SMAC. Uh, the business has, has uh, probably grown. Tell us about that. And what you're doing during uh, this quarantine season uh, to grow your money. Okay. Um, First of all, as a person, I, have, I had a very bad money habit, a very bad uh -huh. 
money culture. Mm. So really first. Okay, now let's switch on that microphone. Eh? Hey. <laughs> Person, I had a very bad money habit. I used to postpone expenditure, like Beatrice has said, and my sister was far better off than I was. At a point, I would budget to spend all my money. So they'd give us money for break. I know I'm spending some at break, I'm spending some at lunch, and in the evening, I have to eat something. But was the thing in the evening really necessary? It was not. So as I grew older, uh, my dad told me at one point, do not budget for money you do not have. And that stuck with me. I mean, as young people, we have a tendency to budget for money that we do not have. You plan on the 100K that your dad is going to give you for pocket money, but your dad is also planning to give you 50K because he has problems of his own. So what happens when you don't get 100K and you have all these plans, you've made all these promises to your friends, you have to borrow, okay? So you borrow and in the end, you keep on borrowing even when they keep on giving you money. And it's a big habit with Ugandans. Very many Ugandans are earning salaries, but at the end of the month, they have really nothing. So you borrow, and by the time your salary comes in, you're paying off those debts. Once those debts are paid off, you have nothing, you have to borrow again. So you're still living in the same cycle, you're cycling in the same mud, okay? So as a person, um, one of the things that Stanbic helped me during this uh, championship is to learn the money cycle. I mean, plan to get it, plan on how to get your money, keep your money, and then grow it. So we did a project, and uh, the project was doing briquettes. So, like Beatrice has said, money is a reward for solving problems. Now, we realize that, you know, uh, at current rates of deforestation and desertification are very high, and say Sub-Saharan Africa will be a desert in very few years. So, the issue was, how do we stop this from happening without being too expensive for the ordinary Ugandan? So, we thought of recycling uh, organic material, banana peelings and the likes, and coming up with these briquettes, charcoal briquettes, and People actually burn these things, cook, and they last longer. But then we also thought about a problem and were like, okay, but people are doing this in the business. What makes us different? Mm -hmm. So we had to, inc to uh, incorporate a mosquito repellent that we made using citronella oil from uh, lemongrass. Mm. Okay? So, you know, mal ma malaria is, uh, is among the biggest killers, the mm. biggest causes of infant mortality in Uganda. And currently, I think the government is, even during this COVID period, they're telling you do not die of malaria. Why survive COVID and die of malaria? Yes. So we thought of how do we be different? And that was the issue we came up with. So to, as a young person, find your niche, find your passion, and exploit it. Try to come up with ideas. Try to find a way to make that money. It doesn't have to be a very new idea. I mean, everyone is confused with this thing of, I have to come up with something so miraculous that it looks like it drops from heaven, and that's how I'll make money. No! You can have a business idea that is already existing, but learn from those existing business ideas, find their loopholes, perfect them, and, you know, make yourself better. Learn from their mistakes, make yourself better. I mean, Amazon, um, Amazon, the Amazon came into a market where there are already other uh, online marketing places. But how did they make their niche? You know, they went in the fashion industry, they went chic. I mean, they provided very nice uh, fashion, uh, very nice materials at very cheap prices for people. And over time, a lot of people, because they did not make that much money, these guys are maximizing sales revenue. Okay? So, and right now, they're the biggest online trading company we have. So, as a young person, really do not sit back on your talent exploit it and aim to make that money, aim to keep it, and then in the end of it, hope to have that money work for you. I mean, you don't have to work till you die. Yeah, so aim to have that money work for you. And this whole mentality of, you know, live like a king, die like a hustler thing, doesn't work at all. I mean... I'm um, 19 <laughs> and a half. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a reason why I asked that question. Hmm. Daniel is only 19 years old. 
and, and the, the way he's thinking about money. Yes. It is the way us 40 year olds class think about money. So, so if a 19 year old can think about money, just after going through a one to the one year, nine, nine month months program, months. then why can we not think different, especially within this COVID period? I'm sorry, Daniel, for talking with this word, but thank you so much for those words of wisdom. Very yeah. proud. Mm. Thank you. Like I was saying, um, this whole mentality of live like a king, die like a hustler, it doesn't work. It doesn't really help you at all. As young people, we need to learn the difference between our assets and our liabilities. Anything that brings in money to you is an asset. Anything that takes away money is a liability, period. That is it. You don't need it. I mean, we're all focusing on dripping so hard, you know. You want to, you want to buy the clothes you really want to um, impress a lot of people. You want to take out your friends. And it's all right. It's good. Because in the long run, um, maybe how you present yourself or maybe the relationships that you keep is what might help you get the connections to make the money but you don't have to go overboard with it i mean at a point you're a student but it's the only point in life where you're making money for no work done it's true okay your parents are giving you money and you're not doing any work to earn that money all you have to do is go to school they provide everything use your head come out with the grades and they still give you money the next time Come but on. once you come out, you know, you're, you're broke. broke. It's a good life. You come into your VAC and you're broke. So many of us are actually saving to spend in VAC. Oh. Wow. Sorry, saving to spend in VAC. You mm. save and your thought is, uh, I need a new watch. Okay, I need a new phone. Okay, but if you did that, you're, you're getting a new phone so you can buy data to WhatsApp, Facebook, stream on Instagram. I don't know. It's not helping you in any way. You're actually buying at your... Bought yeah. this phone in bulk. You're a courier for money. Yeah. Someone is making <laughs> someone is making money off of you. You bought this phone yeah. at say four hundred thousand. You're spending an average of five thousand every day on data, and that data you're not con uh, uh, conducting business deals. That money is coming in. So you're constantly taking. At a point, you have to go and beg your dad for money. Oh man. And at a point, your dad is also going to get fed up because you're growing. You should be responsible, be able to take responsibility for your own actions, your own decisions, and how you will live your life. I mean, start investing. Okay? Absolutely. Wow. Yes. Uh, so, wow. yeah. Daniel, Daniel, but Daniel is a finalist uh, at the championship. So, uh, Clearly. Uh, this man, eh, very bright. Uh, we shall also do a separate live for Daniel. I'm <laughs> telling you. This man I'm telling you. Absolutely. He has a lot of knowledge yeah. to share. Are, 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 you, are the brickets still on sale? Oh, Where yes, yes, about that. that. Uh, so, so our brickets, brickets we, we actually shut down a bit for to rebrand. Okay. But, but the thing is, is we're, we're trying to legalize our operations. operations. That's nice. what we're doing. And we're looking for investment opportunities. People can either help us, either people who are looking to invest in our... Our business also we're trying to source from our friends you know sell the idea to them and also learn from how we went wrong during the uh, from where we went wrong during uh, the championship mm. because our goal was to win but we didn't win and the judges said we didn't win for certain <laughs> reasons so we're trying to still work on ourselves and finesse ourselves and I think that's also another good thing because mm. during in our education system there is no subject that teaches you for personal finance Nothing. it is not there and at this point we're moving into a technological era where machines are, repl are replacing us. So many people are actually going to be jobless mm. at a point. And if you have a job, they'll, uh, you might work for five years, they create a machine that does your job. Mm. And you have to be laid off. So how do you plan for that, you know, to be laid off? How do you plan for your retirement? And at the end of it, oh, even if you know about your personal finances, the process is still something mm. very many of us do not understand. Uh, mm. How you plan, how you exact your plan, and how you do a monitoring and evaluation of how you've you know, you've, uh, you've uh, saved this money, how you've invested it, who you're accountable to. So people, we have to do an assessment on ourselves. Absolutely. Be honest with yourself. Mm. Have someone who is holding you accountable. Personally, right. my dad does that a right. lot for me. He's always looking That's at me great. and saying, man, you're growing. Yeah, man. And the first thing he comes around is responsibility. That is it. <laughs> it requires money to be responsible at a point. Daniel is an alumni and uh, we'll be having more conversations with him later. But uh, there are questions here. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to you, uh, and uh, Emma. But before I come to you, Barbara. Barbara is literally uh, the fuel of this entire experience. Yeah? Barbara. You ha yes, with, 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 there's a, with, though we are social distancing, there's, you have an incredible story. Um, 
that, that not, not just involves how you know you went through schools, but also how you identified your passion and how that passion has helped you. Uh, you know, not just and from the ba ba Barbara sings, Barbara dances, Barbara is an actor. What else? She emcees. Uh, you are bringing everything out. Everything out. Everything out. <laughs> Share your, your, your own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they are actually going to invest in those businesses. Yeah. So a lot of businesses like Daniel, if he had to stop with his partners because of what's going on, oh, we did not stop it. What was the point of starting that mm -hmm. we, yeah. So the next phase of national schools is we are running what we call a tier two, where we will be supporting these businesses and actually get actual business guru on board to invest in these businesses because you cannot say you're running like a business and not support. Absolutely. So that we can raise the bar um, for our youth. Otherwise, we do not know the game we are playing if we are not doing that. So, Daniel, that is one thing I wanted to point out very strongly. That business is going to run, and no matter what happens, your first support comes from Stan Big Bank, and then we'll get support elsewhere. So I needed to mention that very strongly. But um, in regards to my passion, one funny thing, and I'll take a few minutes because I know we are running out of time. I used to do it for fun. Hey, Barbara, we need someone to sing. Barbara, can you come? Yes, yes, I, I sing. Oh, we need an we MC. Barbara, can you, you know, say, you know, being the African tradition, you know, when we were young, they used to give us money when you dance, you know, those good things. So I thought, ah, it is just a usual thing. Until I met a few people who told me, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot have a passion in something and that passion is not making you some money or adding value to your life. Having passion for something is one thing. Earning from it is another. So why not use it to earn something so that your life has value for you to add value to others? Because if I don't add value to my life, how am I going to add value to others? With a passion that I have and I am sitting on it. So for me, my journey has been that way. For the longest time, I took my passion for granted. Yeah. Until, thank God, I joined Stan Big Bank. And at one point, I think they were like, look at this Muyaya we brought. But OK, we are sure <laughs> she will be able to deliver. And actually, they bought into the passion. And they allowed me to do what I do best. That is another thing. Whatever it is that we are doing, you have to work with partners that actually accept you for who you are, mm -hmm. not for you to to change for them because then your passion won't come out you won't be able to deliver and yes, you won't yes, earn yes, yeah. that money that we need to earn so that we do what b3 has told us we need to be doing yeah. so that has kind of been my journey and i hope it will be a journey for even our viewers and our listeners that are listening that let your passion add value to your life for you to add value to others thanks brian yeah thank you barbara uh, you can uh, uh, follow these conversations, Barbara Kasekin on Twitter and Facebook. She has so much going on there, uh, uh, music, acting, and all that. Uh, t questions here before we wrap this up. Uh, let me start with uh, Emma. Uh, someone is asking you here, please feed more into the treasury bills. How do they work, and how do I get money uh, from them? Okay. So that is actually a whole conversation mm. in yes. itself because mm. there's a whole mechanics of how treasury bills work. But in simple terms, you're lending money to government mm -hmm. for three months, six months, nine, uh, 12 months, or even two years, three years, or five years, up to 15 years at the bonds, and government pays you back an interest. So for the T-bills, they'll pay you an interest at the end of the, the period, three months, six months, or 12 months, for a bond, they'll pay you what we call a coupon every six months. So if you put away your money, for example, one million shillings at 15% uh, for five years, uh, if it is 15%, that means you're going to earn 150,000 a year. So you'll get half of it in June and the other half in December. Uh, there'll be some tax off, withholding yeah. tax, but yeah. basically that's about how it works. So the way uh, to get involved is go to your, the nearest branch of your bank, hopefully it's Stanbeck Bank, <laughs> and ask them to help you open uh, a CDS account CDS. with Central Bank. They will give you quite a bit of paperwork. Mm. Uh, you sign the paperwork. The good thing, it's a one-time thing. And then, uh, then you will just be giving your bank uh, a, 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 a 
uh, whenever you want to buy a T-bill or a bond, you can give them an instruction, they will buy for you at the prevailing rates. So uh, the best thing is to get in touch with your personal banker. They'll be able mm. to support you through. Fantastic. Um, this three. Yes, sir. You have hit the nail mm. properly. Mm. The head. But someone is here is asking, mm. how do we end up spending more than what we earn? And still survive. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> you tell me. You know, when we are doing personal financial coaching, I sit with people and ask them, show me your expenditure, show me your income. Uh -huh. Okay, 99% of the time. People are spending more yeah. than they earn. Do you know how? Uh -huh. Bad habits. And also, you're not tracking extra money. You're either eating from your savings, you mm -hmm. get some of your savings when your money runs out, the one you earned, or people give you money and you don't record it in your head as income because or you were visiting and someone sent you 200,000 or someone thought about you and sent you 100k or the other day you were Barbara singing somewhere and people forward you some kamane before you started uh, charging them for it what you did is that kamane you didn't record it as income you just went and ate it so when you look at your expenditure and you look at your income and they don't match up that's just a wake up call that my person that my personal financial management plan is not working this is what I've done. I downloaded an app at the beginning, I think towards the end of last year. Mm -hmm. It's called Spending. It's a brown wallet on your phone. It's called Spending. Mm -hmm. That app, you record your income and expenditure immediately. Like the moment someone hands me 20,000 shillings, I go in there and I put in income under transactions. It's, what, what is the app it's called? called Spending. Spending. S-E-P-E-N-D-I-N-G. -E it is like a brown wallet with woman is coming out like this. Okay. You people, it has saved my life. Huh? Mm. I am able to quickly know income. This is what has come in. Expenditure, this is what has gone out. And you mm. can look at daily. What, and I can give you different accounts. Your business, you can put in for business, for your personal finances, for over what. Like you can have so many accounts on one. But I can, for example, go to it and say, the week of last, last week in business, how much did I earn? How much did I spend? I can look at my tithe. I can look at my savings. You can put so many more accounts for yourself. It's a very okay. simple app. So basically, if, you, if you're spending more than you're earning, it's not magic. You just have bad financial habits. How do you survive? Sit down. Be honest with yourself. Kill your expenses. Everything that is unnecessary. Cut it out. Cut it out until you have a budget. The rich live below, not within. They live below their income. So we have to do the same. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, according to public demand, this three will come back. Nah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. This three has to come back. Our panelists have to come back. This is incredible. So much here. Emma, everyone is thanking Emma and Emma. We shall come back and tell us how the bank can help us be better managers. Personal finance is not in our curriculum. It's yeah. our responsibility to get that knowledge. Daniel, people love um, your analysis and what you're doing during vacation. Yes. Yes. Eva Kasasa is saying good job, Emma, with your children's finances. Mm. Hey, ha, this one is good. This one is good. Jose is saying the Bible says mm. you will lend to nations. Start Amen. with Uganda. Start with where you come to Uganda. <laughs> by lending us at least 100K Mazima, yeah, yes. with your treasury bills. We want you to be responsible with your money. And just to paint a picture for you, this year, the Standing National Schools Championships has targeted 60,000 students. We are passionate about making sure that we add value to those students. Daniel is just one of the many whose lives have been changed. Teachers are also being changed. We shall share stories of how their lives have changed, how they're not just looking at their teaching profession, but out of that they've started tree planting, winemaking, chicken, Goat wearing, wow. uh, it is the holy man, so I'll not say the other animal. Uh, but you know, they are doing all these things to make wow. sure that they get, uh, you know, they make more money. Um, uh, we have people uh, who are also investing in planting trees with our partnership with roofings. Wow. All these guys are making sure that we add value, and we wouldn't do this uh, without them. Next week. We are continuing these conversations. Mm. Yeah? yeah? Every Monday at 11, this is the place to watch. Yeah. The Standard Bank Uganda page. So make sure you tune in. You can also follow the hashtag Champion.
and uh, find out what people are doing during this time. Uh, I, 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 let me ask Barbara. Barbara, she's my boss, but let her come to, to, to just wrap this up. A word of um, a, a last word for, 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 for the people who are watching us. Barbara is a, uh, a corporate social investment manager with social distance. Yes, can, can they hear me? Okay. But you speak louder. Uh, what do you want uh, to leave with, with the people who are watching us? You know, you sit, uh, you, you take this entire project with, the, with an incredible team. What do you want, especially parents, do with our children during this time? Thank you very much, Brian. One thing we have to remember, Uganda is a very young nation. Mm. COVID can be a blessing and a curse. Mm. Uh -huh. It depends on how you look at it. Mm. From my perspective, COVID is a blessing. Why is it a blessing? One, COVID is a blessing because as parents, you do not see your children for who they are. Mm. Two, COVID is a blessing because for our young people, the Daniels, for example, this is the time to re-evaluate themselves. Uh -huh. The third thing, COVID is a blessing for us, especially the employees, to see if they are actually relevant in the companies in which we are working. To also see if what we are doing is exactly what we should <laughs> be doing essential. in the first place. Because <laughs> when you have passion for something, no one has to tell you what to do. You will wake up at 6 o'clock and be able to get on those Zoom calls without someone forcing you. So my message to all our viewers, who we thank very much for tuning in this morning, this afternoon, is what is your why? Mm. In this period. Because if you don't know what your why is, whether you're a parent, whether you're a student, or maybe you could call it youth, or whether you're employed mm. like I am, or you're a small business owner, mm. what is your why? Yeah. Because whether we speak about it, whether big we speak about it, whether ever comes and tells you how many opportunities you have, if you have not defined what works for you, for you to even remain relevant as you, then this is not the way. Yes. So please just take the time to find out exactly what our rights are. What makes me relevant as a parent, as a student, as an employee, mm. as a small business owner? Mm. What makes me relevant? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to us. We are truly honored. As always, Sandy Bank is here to make dreams possible because we believe it can, can be. be. Mm. Thank you, Brian. Fabraka second. Ovgalo, Wanang. Ovgalo, Ovgalo. All right. We have posted questions on the Sandvik Facebook page. Go there. The first five people to answer those questions will each win a meal courtesy of Cafe Javas. The beauty about this is that it can be delivered to your home. Pastor, delete that expense. Okay. Think about your money while eating that food. It's our experience <laughs> for you. It's what we give you uh, during this quarantine. B3, yes. thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Emma, thank you so much. Daniel, thank you so much. Uh, and we shall see you next week at 11 o'clock, right here on the Stanley Bank Facebook page. Keep moving forward.